listening to The Donor Doctor Show, where your host, James Newberry, will help you improve the health of your fundraising. Now over to Jane. You are listening to The Donor Doctor Show, episode number two. I have with me the donor doctor himself, Mr. James Newberry. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well today. Well, I'm excited. What are we going to share with the listeners? We're going to talk about envelopes today, or I prefer to call them carriers because because sometimes you don't use an envelope, actually, uh, to mail your letter. And I'd like to start today with, uh, you know, my hero is Herschel Gordon Lewis, uh, and I had the uh, the privilege of going to a conference in here, a two-day conference in New York, and uh, uh, there was only three people who attended, and I was one of them, and I got to ask every question I wanted to know about direct mail. This is what he says about uh, the cardinal rule of envelope copy. The only purpose of the carrier envelope, other than preventing its contents from spilling out onto the street, is to get itself opened. Uh, that's from Creative Rules for the 21st Century, but he's written it in other places, too. Um, so that's that's something to consider. I would, I would add that I do think that there is some value in um, trying to, uh, you know, I don't think you want to get them to open it and, and feel like they've been swindled. So I, I would, I would add, add that caveat to that. Um, before we go and answer the age-old question to tease or not to tease on the envelope, uh, I want to I wanna talk about different types of carriers there are out there and um, which ones you should consider. And, I, and, and the reason I believe you should start with your carrier is because your whole package stems uh, from that decision. For instance, if you're going to mail a, uh, a keychain or uh, some playing cards, you by definition need a, a box to send it. And I'm not, not going to do it that often, um, but, but that would require a box. Uh, one of my favorite techniques that I've had real good success with are two-way tubes. And you send something, uh, this is particularly good for museums, I'll, g- I'll give you an example, um, that, that made People Magazine, is that my friend Stuart, who I'll be interviewing later, um, he sent, uh, for the Reagan Library, he sent a, a rose uh, to Nancy Reagan um, to the donor, and they would send it back with a BRE, and that was delivered. And, I sh- and they got thousands, and it became it was featured in People magazine. It did very well, too. So I guess the first type of, uh, of carrier is, is what I'd call dimensional, and that's boxes and tubes. Something kind of related to that uh, that aren't necessarily dimensional are file folders, uh, which also stick out, uh, button and string envelopes, you've seen those. It does require a little bit of handwork and is more expensive, but because it's so unique, it, it stands out. Uh, another example is a square envelope. It's rarely seen because the post office really wants you to mail something that's a rectangle. Uh, they charge more for a square. But I, I saw a mail piece the other day. Um, it was actually a, an event uh, that cost $50,000. Uh, um, yeah, it was to to meet uh, the guy that killed Bin Laden, and anyway, it was in a square envelope, and I said, "Whoa, that stands out! I, I've never seen a square envelope, uh, and I know why because it, because of the the shape is not what the post office likes, and they charge more." The thing that I would talk about when you, when you're doing your your envelopes, don't just uh, send a number ten window every time. I'm not saying that those don't have their place. Um, but there's maybe a little bit too much conformity uh, when people look at these things. Uh, it's better to maybe stand out more is, is the recommend, recommendation I would make. Um, so that's the first type. The, the second type of carrier that I don't think is used enough is personal stationery. By that, I'm, I, I mean you should try to craft the appeal to look as much as possible like it's a birthday card from your grandmother. And, and how would you go about that? You might have a, a, a good handwritten font that, that looks, looks handwritten and, you know, it would be matching. You certainly wouldn't put a bunch of teaser everywhere if you're trying to get the personal look. Uh, on the upper left, uh, where you have the person's name, you would might want to have somebody's name with a, kind of a mailing label, the kind that you get from charities, you know, a dog or a flag, you know, that kind of thing. So personal stationery is a, is a popular one. I've seen them do quite well. 
Um, obviously, if you're going to go that approach, uh, you'd rather have a closed face than a, uh, than a window. It doesn't look uh, credible with a window as much. Uh, the third that's kind of related to this one, but it's a little bit more upscale, is, is what I call an exclusive carrier. It's personal, but it, it, it has something like gold foil or something that kind of makes people think, hey, I'm special. And this is, this is popular with museum mailings or um, high-end membership organizations. Uh, something you don't want to put on a personal thing is, and I have seen this, is open immediately, 72-hour deadline. I mean, it's, obviously you're throwing it off if it's supposed to be personal or something of that sort. The fourth kind of carrier is uh, what I call an affinity or interest carrier. I'll never forget uh, this guy I met named Max Haynes, who's an aviation photographer, and he told me, these guys would rather look at a plane than naked women. And I said, wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> and there's some truth to that, actually. Uh, later, I did, uh, we did some testing for the Commemorative Air Force, and we were trying to save the nose art, which does have uh, you know, semi-clad na- uh, women on there. And that was not as popular as saving the planes itself. So, so Max was on to something. And anyway, in this type of carrier, it could be if, if you're mailing to golfers, show golfing. If you're if uh, you know you're mailing uh, to aviation buff, show show a World War II airplane. You're know, like a P forty or or whatever it is uh, that's popular. The fifth kind of carrier, and I think this is the one most often um, misunderstood, is is the curiosity, the carrier that uses some kind of curiosity. Uh, what I'm talking about is 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 a, is a carrier that has some really interesting teaser. Uh, the classic that I saw uh, from a guy in the 90s that just mailed a lot was uh, this. It was from a from a congresswoman, so it looked a little bit like franked mail, but it had this teaser, which I think made the mailing. One woman struggle against Bill Clinton. I mean, it had it had interest. You had to open up to see what the struggle was. Now, the struggle was not sexual. It was like some lawsuit or something like that. <laughs> but it had enough. It had enough of it. Uh, it was salacious enough to 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 work. So. Uh, the Curiosity key Teaser, uh, I, f- I found one recently, by the way. Uh, I got one in the mail, and this wasn't for fundraising, but it was it was by a doctor. Had his little, uh, you know, whatever, the, the, the doctor symbol. Uh, and it was in Florida, and it said, Why Big Pharma Killed President Eisenhower. Inside, the censored story of how the drug company targeted our beloved war hero and 34th president. So, I mean, that's a... Uh, that's a decent curiosity teaser, I thought. I mean, if you if you're at all interested in history or something, you kind of think, well, I want to I, I want to know. I mean, it's sensational, obviously, but people are interested. the The sixth uh, type of carrier, which is you know great for animals, is what I call a pain carrier, and that's an animal that just is so sad looking. Uh, I've used this for uh, this white horse; it just looked awful, and, and and you get so many complaints, but it really works well. And this is kind of like the uh, carrier equivalent of the ASPC ad, you know, with uh, Sarah McLachlan, you know, yeah. in the arms of the, um, you know, it's it's real tough, you know, you have to look away. Dogs. Yeah, I've, I, yeah, it's very really tough. The sad <laughs> dogs, and it's tough to <laughs> people flip the sca- the the, the uh, station. It's just it's difficult. Now, pain leads to action, so that's why it is such an effective carrier is it really increases your response because people just can't. Now, now you're going to get complaints. I remember my mother, um, it wasn't the carrier, but it was the, the contents. It was on, I think, animal testing, and she was very upset because I think they were experimenting on a rabbit or something of this sort, and she's very upset. So you're going to get some complaints, and, and you have to have some thick skin. I mean, you're not gonna, it's not going to be uh, out-of-control complaints, but you're going to get some, so you have to be prepared for that. Um, the seventh type of carrier that a lot of groups do, I'm calling an emergency carrier. Now, this could be a real FedEx or, or, or you know, US, UPS, or there's, there, UPS has, like, a cheaper product that actually the post office mails. Or it could be one of these fake ones that kind of looks like a, a priority envelope of some types. Now, you have to be careful with your wording because you want, you want it to be make it, people think it's real official, but the post office doesn't want you to. <laughs> so there's some, there's some play there. But the emergency carrier is great when you have an emergency, so that would be the time to use it. What bothers me is when people don't have an emergency and use this. It just doesn't, it doesn't work as well. Um, the eighth type of carrier that, that I'm not as big a fan of, but it is a type, and, and I'm putting it out there, is uh, a blank 
uh, or no carrier. A no carrier, the you, you don't have a, an envelope at all. It's just the letter is uh, um, attached to the reply envelope. So you're already in the letter. Uh, that might work for more of a, you know, it's like work for a presidential library. You don't want to have a no carrier, but it can work for some. Um, you can also buy the post offices, that, you know, has a product that uh, with a stamp already affixed. And, and there's a certain mystery with a blank carrier. So it does get opened. Um, it doesn't it doesn't give you any 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 added uh, uh, bump though. I mean, so that's one one area I maybe I may disagree with Herschel Gordon Lewis about the only goal of the carriers to get it opened. I want to get them opened with a certain emotion, like like certain certain carriers. You know, they really make you like, wow, I'm already upset. You know, when you see like a, a really sad you know animal on the carrier, I'm upset. So that's that's yeah. that's a little bit more than just getting them to open. You know, so. I'm a little bit more ambitious than him th on that. Um, the ninth is the the famous signer carrier, and there's there's not that many, but there's a few people that are so popular, at least with their group, and uh, at least with a certain niche. and And I and I, I came up with a few. Uh, Tom Hanks, who signs for the National World War II Museum, obviously was in that movie. Uh, George Will with you know uh, politically conservative people. Robert Redford with environmentalists. And Clint Eastwood, uh, you know, with uh, more conservative groups, but but you know he's popular with a lot of people. Um, if you have one of these, just put that in the upper left, and you know that is your teaser. You really don't need any more teaser. You know, when you when you have somebody famous like that, that's not to say you can't have it. I saw um, a Robert Redford uh, um, carrier. Uh, he signs for the National Resources Defense Council, and it had also something with um, polar bears that were. Really sad, cute puppy polar bears. So it did both, and I, I think it, I think it worked for me. But uh, in general, I, I would say if you have a famous signer, you certainly want to put them in the upper left, even if they only write sign the lift note, uh, which is like a one-page letter. In other words, they didn't sign the main letter. You want to use their uh, their celebrity uh, in your favor. Um, other people that can work that aren't famous, but they're they're credible, is obviously a senator. And in that kind of case, I wanted to make. Make it look like it's Frank Mail. Uh, generals, doctors, lawyers—they all have uh, credibility. The the next type, which is kind of like pain, but it's different. I call it the outrage carrier, and this would be more for your political mailings. Uh, these would have teasers or graphic image that that infuriates your donor base. It could be somebody burning the flag, you know, who who knows? It's something something outrageous, uh, and this kind of leads people to action. Um, the next one is a very popular one, as I call a guilt carrier. And these carriers usually show or tell you something of value in the carrier. I think it's better to show, by the way. And it could be like a nickel, a quarter, a dollar bill. I've seen two dollar bill. I've seen clip stamps. Uh, I've seen promise of mailing labels. The, the technique uh, is the teaser. In other words, you, you're showing the quarter. I mean, I'm not saying you can't have some words with that, too. But nobody's going to throw away a quarter or a half dollar or what have you, or a clip stamp. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a very effective one. Now, there's one that's kind of interesting that, that I've seen that works and uh, is worth talking about. It's a booklet, a two-way booklet, and in in, you mail it, and the idea is a person signs it and sends it back. Um, the, there's two that I realized they were popular, one group was sending out the Constitution, and I was I was giving my son a couple of you know. He says, oh, "You already gave me the Constitution. Well, I can't throw it away. Don't you have a friend to give them out?" <laughs> so apparently, that's not the cool thing to do to pass out constitutions at school. But uh, I I can't throw away the Constitution. Uh, there was another example where um, in the very competitive religious market, a uh, a book of John or or Proverbs or something like that was sent in the mail. And I was putting my samples in other people's mailboxes. And that gives you an idea how powerful it was. I didn't want to throw it away. Have somebody else. <laughs> nice. <laughs> have somebody else, you know, uh, I don't know, have the uh, uh, bad karma, if you will. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's a good, it's guilt. You feel, you feel somebody gives something to you, you feel like you have to do something. Even my dad, who is not very direct mail responsive, but when he does give, gives, gives a, a fair amount. Um, Somebody sent him a dollar bill, and um, he sent one hundred and one dollars back. And there was also, you know, they tried to send him something else. They sent him a nice, like lithograph thing. I thought it was really nice, um, but he didn't care about that. In fact, I see how he opens his mail; he just throws it all away. 
mostly. So, but I mean, obviously, I can throw away a dollar bill. So that gives you an idea of why that is such an effective carrier. Um, the last one, I didn't know how to call this, uh, but I call it a con carrier, and it's not. It's not a true con. If it, it, to, to work, it has to have enough truth that it doesn't anger people. Let me give you an example. Uh, I'm sure you've seen these where it says check and closed. And, and sometimes you, you get, you know, like an insurance refund or, you know, it's legitimate. In this case, it's the charity sends you a check. It's usually like for one or two dollars. And, and you have to be kind of a slime ball or not like the charity to cash it, right? Uh, but people aren't mad when they get it because they say, oh, there's enough truth to it. Uh, I saw a political group said they had IRS Form 990 enclosed, and their their mailing was on how um, the government was out to get them because of their political uh, persuasion. And there was enough truth to it because that IRS form was enclosed. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about. You know, I, I don't think you want to be um, you know, over the top. As, as long as there's enough truth to it, I think you're fine there. Now, what I'd like to do in this last moment is talk about teasers because... Good teasers, and I'll give you an idea of what a good teaser is and what a bad teaser is. Um, I remember years ago, I, I, I saw this teaser, and it was so bad that, uh, and I'll pick one from a left-wing group and one from a right-wing right wing group to give you, so I'm not, 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 not uh, playing favorites here. The first group was the ACLU, and it was a pretty good letter. It was on, um, it was on all the revelations of Snowden, but years before he made them. And, it, and the teaser was, again, the, the, the letter was good, but the teaser uh, was so bad. It said, there's a movement afoot to defend liberty. Now, what is that? Now, I, I suppose somebody could say, well, that's a curiosity you have to open. No, it's a very, you know, the curiosity is very, you really have to hit somebody hard. People don't care. I don't know what there's a movement afoot to defend liberty. I don't know what that means. But I know what the letter was about, and the letter said, Bush, Bush Cheney administration is recording your phone calls. And you put their pictures, their names and stuff, and said they're listening to your phone calls or recording your phone calls. That would have been a much better teaser. I mean, it was not even close. But instead, it was a decent letter. But whoever wrote the carrier said, there's a movement afoot to defend liberty. And I don't know what that is. Uh, another one I saw from a, a very conservative group, right before, you remember, the Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, um... He was, uh, I think most people didn't think he did a good job. Anyway, he, he, he got fired, so wh whether, whether it's fair or not, I don't know. But your market, though, probably was, was turned off by him. It said four more years, and I thought to myself, really? Is there a market for people? Uh, that, first off, you know, letters of support. People are against things more than they're for things anyway, just so psychologically it was weak there. So those are, those are two types. Now let me give you some... Some teasers that I like. Uh, one of the favorite that I ever saw for a troop support group was "Mail Call Hurts," and it had a um, had those words, and then it had a small uh, piece of gum, you know, like a beach mitt gum, you know, the, the small little. Uh, yeah. And that that was a very uh, a very successful mailing. Uh, less is more when it comes to teaser. You don't want to have really long. You don't want to spill your guts on the carrier. I mean, that's a big mistake people make that are professional, really. In fact, if you don't know, go with no teaser. <laughs> better, <laughs> better to go with none, particularly if, it's, if, if, if you've done what I've talked about, trying to make your letter look personal. Uh, I should say on that personal station there, you probably, if you can avoid a peel box even, it's a, it's a good idea. Uh, but anyway... Um, Good teaser, another one, uh, uh, you know, uh, I saw Derby Winter Slaughtered work well. Something that's usually three or four words uh, is good. I remember my friend had one that was a political one. He, uh, you remember Marion Barry many years ago? Yeah. He had the, uh, the, the, the B star 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 H set me up, you know, of course, I mean. <laughs> That was in the mm. news. So well, a lot of things that, that are your teasers will be in the news, you know, the, they're, they're what people are talking about, and people are interested. If you look at the National Enquirer, or I'm not saying that, that all are, you know, I, I would like to think that are, uh, but, but they know what they're doing, or, or maybe a better example might be some of the New York newspapers, the Daily News, how they, they write headlines. Uh, that would be something you would want to pay attention to uh, if you're doing your, um, when you're writing your teaser. But you certainly don't want to do, there's a movement afoot to defend liberty. 
Another, in addition to not telling me what it's about, it's too highfalutin. What you want to do is talk to your donor, talk to their fears, talk to their interests. Now, you tell me somebody is recording my phone call, listening to my phone call, uh, and their audience, of course, would not like those people, then that, they're much more scared, and that, that would have worked uh, so much better. So anyway, um, the next interview, uh, I'm going to interview my friend Stuart, and we're going to talk about... Uh, he, he's the guy that did the, the first uh, tube mailing that I've seen that I've used uh, many times and uh, we're going to talk about uh, his career in direct mail nice looking forward to it so that's a wrap for the Donor Doctor Show number 2 Carriers